What's up, everybody? Kyle and Josh back with a brand new episode of Those Two Days. Hey-o. Yeah, buddy. So today on TTD, we are we're cleaning house. <laughs> Pun intended. So we're, we have uh, we have the pleasure of Liam Kircher joining us. He's been in the cleaning industry since he was in diapers. So his folks owned and operated their own commercial cleaning business when he was growing up. Um, it wasn't really a passion of his, but it wasn't long after he graduated from college and that mundane wall of the nine to five, it had him looking to get back to his roots. And so what he did is he started a cleaning business. And so uh, sole proprietorship, he started this business while he was living in the United States and his business operated in Canada, a whole different country, right? And he was doing that part time while he was still working his nine to five uh, as a realtor. And he scaled that business to over $1 million in annual revenue within three years. And so, and that's with zero employees and zero equipment. That's impressive. So it's a killer story, man. So cash flow is king with, with Liam and the cleaning industry provides that. So today, He's immersed himself in entrepreneurship. He not only is continuing to operate his cleaning business, but teaches others how to launch, grow, and scale their own house cleaning business. And so uh, stack on con content creator, Discord operator, and cash flow deployer. And Liam is showing his audience how to work smarter and not harder. So stick around as Liam schools us on cash flow and how anyone with the right drive can level up with a mop and a broom. Woo. So, little little plugs there, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, as always, we're your hosts. That's Josh. He's being quiet for once. I'm Kyle. <laughs> I'm this I mean, you you only <laughs> gave me crap about it before we even started. So, I just it's it's on the mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, but before we get going, if you guys get value out of these podcasts, these YouTube podcasts, give us a subscribe. Give us a like. Please do uh, follow us on YouTube at those two dads or go to the, your favorite place that you are listening to these episodes and like, like comment, give us a review, all that kind of stuff. It helps us grow the channel and brings us cool, you know, the opportunity to bring and showcase cool new guests like Liam. So yeah, without further ado, Josh, we wait ready for him. Liam. Yeah, let's do it. What's, What's up, up Liam? What's going on? First off, I gotta say that was a very, very nice intro. I like, <laughs> he's got to butter hey, you up. All, he's all I did was just read your highlight reel. <laughs> well, so, it, it, it has nothing smooth. to do with me, and it has everything to do with the things that you've been able to accomplish in your business and also outside of the core business because I know you're working on some other stuff too. So it's uh, it's just a testament to what you're able to showcase and what you've shared with the world. And so that's kind of what this show is all about, man. I love it, man. Well, I, I, I appreciate being here, and uh, thanks for having me on, guys. Yeah, for sure. No, I and I I think one of the cool things, right, is, you know, everybody always hears about, oh, the, this crypto business and that Forex business and this affiliate marketing business, and then you bring someone in, they're like, hey, this cleaning business, and people just kind of go, huh? Like, they're, they're like, I don't want to clean toilets, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it's it's not the most fun. I mean, I, I didn't tell my parents, I didn't tell any friends about my cleaning business for like the first year. I mean, I just like kept it under the low. I was like, this is kind of embarrassing. I don't, I don't really want to share this with too many people. Um, and then it, one thing led to another. I told one friend and then it got out to the rest of people. So the secret got out after a while. But yeah. um, it's definitely not an embarrassing business, but it's something you can't go bragging about. That's for sure. Yeah, it, it definitely, uh, it, it, a lot of people will, will kind of cock their head a little bit and be like, okay, you're, you're making this much money cleaning. <laughs> like, okay, do you, you need you to elaborate a little bit more, you know, but before we get into that piece of it, why don't you introduce yourself a bit and, you know, tell everybody who Liam, Liam mm -hmm. is and what you're about and where you're from, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, um, born and raised Canadian. Uh, I live over on the west coast of Canada, just outside Vancouver. I usually say Vancouver because um, I assume a lot of people watching maybe in the US, so not many people know the Canada that too well. But um, yeah, well, just outside Vancouver, born and raised. I grew up playing hockey, lacrosse, like any typical Canadian. Um, literally, like I grew up, it was one of those things where my family was very much so middle class. Uh, my parents, I was very, very fortunate to get a lot of opportunities in life. 
I was definitely not uh, poor, or at least my parents never led me to believe we were poor, which which was kind of, uh, definitely something I got to pat them on the back for. Um, I'm very lucky in that way. But anyways, grew up playing lacrosse, uh, ended up getting a lacrosse scholarship over to the U.S. So I went and played NCAA Division II, um, not Division I, I not, not that smart, uh, <laughs> not that good, but I, I managed to get somewhat of a scholarship. So I went over and played in North Carolina. Um, so not at Chapel Hill, that's D1, played at a smaller school. Um, it was pretty good. Was a student athlete for four years. We ended up winning a conference championship. It was kind of cool. Nice. I learned a ton out of those four years. Um, I'm actually the complete opposite. Everyone's like anti-college, but I'm total opposite. I'm like, I think it's definitely worth it. Obviously, different circumstances for everyone. But yeah, there's a lot of people over there on Twitter where you kind of hang out <laughs> that are super <laughs> anti-college. And I think it's, it's just a fad, really. It, you know what? It's a cool thing to talk about. It's an engagement grab. It's an engagement grab. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, four years of undergrad, I did business management. It was one of those things where like all my friends were doing business and I was like, I'll just join too. Um, got a minor in computer science, like literally nice. like Microsoft Word. So really not that crazy. <laughs> but, um, and then I- that got his heartstrings over there. Little computer <laughs> science guy himself. Hey, yeah, that's uh, I I perked up a little bit. I was like, "What?" <laughs> I, I uh, it was it was very much to like it's sell. It wasn't super crazy. I'll tell you that it was. Like, it was I just cool. needed to to learn how to do a V lookup and a macro in Excel. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, I, I just need the bare minimum. Um. So yeah, I did that four years. I ended up graduating in my junior year because uh, we needed an internship to graduate. I ended up being an intern at Redfin over in Philadelphia. Um. That was just a matter of uh, my girlfriend at the time, her mother worked at Redfin. So it was just sort of like a reference of like, hey, I had no idea what I wanted to do with my life. I was like, I just want to get a job. I want to start making money. I was sick of being poor in college. Like there was a point where I was like, um, my parents gave me money, but not a lot. I think it was like down to like a $200 a month budget. It was very much so like I just would spend it right away the first week. <laughs> like I would just blow it. I just wouldn't be able to afford the rest of the month. <laughs> the t- um, the- the wire transfer came in and shots on me. <laughs> Literally. Yeah. It, it was very much so like, oh, sweet. I can go up twice this week or three times this week. But now the rest of the weeks, now I'm broke. So, <laughs> but yep. um, yeah, so I, I went and ended up graduating college. Uh, it wasn't anything fancy. Like I literally graduated like a 2.4 GPA, nothing super crazy. Um, squeaked by. And then I went and actually worked at Redfin and got my real estate license. So just based off the internship, I enjoyed it through the internship. It was something where I was like, I can think I can make a decent living. Um, I worked at Redfin over in Philly. If anyone knows Redfin that well, it literally is like very much so salary base with a little bit of commission. I was an associate agent. So I wasn't like out there like closing deals or anything like that. I was very much so like just grinding. Um, If anyone knows Philly or knows PA, I was like, I was on the turnpike from 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day, seven days a week, doing showings uh, along the like all, all different counties uh, across PA. So I was literally like going from like Allentown all the way into the city center city some days. Like it was ridiculous. I was in my I was living in my car, yeah. um, and I just didn't enjoy it. But uh, um, Kyle mentioned in the intro that um, my parents, when I was growing up, used to own a commercial cleaning business, uh, residential commercial. My mom actually used to clean houses. And my dad would do the office buildings. So it was just one of those things where like cleaning has always put food on the table for me. Um, I remember I was like literally 14, 15 year old, years old. And because my parents, this is what I assume. I don't know if this is true, but they didn't want to get a babysitter. So I would be like, okay, listen, I can go out. I know that's any babysitter 15 years old, but I, so you know what I mean. Yeah, when I was, man, you know, we, we don't know what kind of kid you were growing up, you know, it's, <laughs> it's fine. So, I mean, my, um, in all fairness, my parents probably should have had a babysitter for me at 14. <laughs> years old. I, I got, I did so many things that they probably don't know about. And so, sorry, mom, sorry, dad, if you find the bottle caps under the couch, it wasn't me. <laughs> um, but besides that embarrassment there, uh, what I would say is like, I, I literally, I used to go and clean toilets with my parents. I remember that late in the evenings yeah. when I was younger. So, instinctively, I just thought to myself, why don't I start a cleaning business? Um, and yeah, I was living over in Philly. I knew that I was so new to business. Like I was like, how do I get a business license? How do I get an LLC? How do I get business insurance? And I was kind of like, okay, 
I'm going to launch this in my hometown. Worst case scenario, my parents are there. So they can be like a backup plan for me um, and help me a little bit and provide some guidance. And I'll be over here working because I was on a work visa. I didn't want to leave. Like I had a job there. I was steady income. Um, and yeah, I, I literally just, I was hustling, bustling. I was literally like, I remember some days I'd be pulling over on like the turnpike and I'd be taking phone calls for cleaning appointments to be booked. And then I'd be trying to call to reschedule showings that same day because I had showings to do for clients, for real estate. Like it was, it was crazy. I was running the business off of my personal cell phone, um, my personal email, like no sort of like business structure um, and like a notepad. I literally had no sort of software. I had nothing put together. Um, it, it was a mess. And I was like, I, I think I have gray hair a little bit still, still from just that one, that first year. Um, and yeah, when you, managed- when, you, when you had the idea though, Liam, to, you know, you wanted to do a residential cleaning mm-hmm. business for your, your, you know, you, you have uh, your, uh, your 1099, your cleaners, right? And mm-hmm. you're you're putting this idea together. Was there like a roadmap or a blueprint that was like in your mind that you saw or like you took a course on or you're just like slapping this stuff together based on like maybe how you saw your parents do it as a kid or like what, what, what did that look like for you? It, that's a really good question. So um, it sounds crazy. It's, it's crazy to look back on, but... I literally just use YouTube, like literally just YouTube. And then whenever I, I that's familiar. There's a tweet or something, uh, you know, like last night, (laughs) go check out his Twitter feed. (laughs) Um, But YouTube is like the most underrated educational platform in the world. It's insane. It's like, you can go in there and it's nuts. But um, to answer your question, I literally use YouTube and then any sort of data or information I got off there, I just utilized my parents as a soundboard to get some feedback from it. My -hmm. parents were sole proprietors, so they did all the cleaning themselves. They never hired any cleaners. They tried once and it didn't work out. Um, So they didn't really have any sort of idea behind business structure or operations. So I literally had to learn from the ground up. I took no courses. It was just YouTube. Um, It it was nuts. It it was uh, obviously YouTube didn't teach me a ton because I literally was off of a notepad and my phone and laptop, but it was just, I was throwing. You also, you also needed to know where to look, what to look for. And when you're just straight up bootstrapping and figuring it out as you go, you don't even know what the right questions to ask are at, at some points, you know? You're just like, here's a new problem. I'm going to solve this problem today. And I'm going to look for the next problem to solve tomorrow. It, exactly. And you know what? The, the route I've always taken in life as far as like before I make a business decision is I always look at what's the worst possible thing that could happen. Um, I could go broke. I could get in credit card debt. Is that still the worst thing that could maybe happen to me? And then what's the potential upside of that potential downside? The upside seems to be very, very high. Starting a business, from what it's, it's on YouTube, sounding from people. I mean, I took a lot of stuff with a grain of salt, what people were saying, but I saw what my parents made off of it and the money they were generating from it. And I was like, it seems like the upside seems to be quite high compared to what the worst case scenario could be. So this looks like an asymmetric bet and worth to take the risk on this. So that's like, I, I've always looked at a risk lot of reward, things. Right? It, yeah. Risk reward li, li, in short terms, a hundred percent. So I've always looked at it in that format. Um, and that was sort of the way I took it was like, I'll pull my hair out this year, this first year and figure it out, piece things together. Um, and we ended up doing just over 120 K gross revenue that first year. Uh, I think I walked away with net 32 K the first year. So it wasn't bad. I wasn't like, um, I don't know. <laughs> for for your first year in business, part time, right? Bootstrapping it all the way through. You're like, eh, 32K wasn't bad. <laughs> <laughs> I probably look at it a bad at a bad outlook because I see myself <laughs> like it, it's it, it was um I was disappointed when I saw it. I'll be honest, because I, I remember literally going to my account and I saw the bottom line and he put it through, and I'm like, that's all I made. Was, was that because you saw the gross figures coming in and you know, it's life's about perspective. You hadn't done this type of thing before you look like there's a lot of new entrepreneurs that look at their bank account. Right. And they're like, Oh, look at this. Like here's a wire transfer, like 10 grand that I'm like, I'm, I'm loaded now, but then you're not seeing like the rent that needs to come out or not that you had rent, but this is an example. You know, here's this expense, that expense, that that's the other. And you're not looking at it from a balance sheet and P and L standpoint, like a business owner should. Right. And so, 
Yeah, I think you're right. I think it was just uneducated in the in just being not very experienced in this current position. I had no idea. Like I was taking out, I wasn't taking out any money actually. I didn't have to. Um, so I was like re reinvesting a lot of money back in and things like that. But I think it was just being uneducated the first year um, and not fully knowing. But because thirty came, grand, dude, net profit is killer year one. You know, yeah. for sole, sole proprietorship, no employees, no nothing, yeah. part time. Like, and you know, I know your perspective is a little bit different now. Because, I'm sorry, but I don't you know. Uh, well, yeah, sorry, Kyle. Like, I, I got to make sure that people who are listening to this right now understand, like, Kyle's trying to be like, dude, that was awesome. And Liam's like, yeah, I still don't believe you, bro. <laughs> like, he's like, well, he's like, I don't care what you say. That's because that Liam's sucked teaching, I should have teaching. made 100 k in profit. <laughs> that's yeah, I, we've got students now that do 100 k the 100k gross in like six months because he's yes. got a system down. But yes, well, I saw someone do 6.5k in one in their first month of launch. I'm like, geez, I'm like, they're killing it. I'm like, this is nuts. Yeah. So, but um, yes, yeah. yeah, so but it's all about perspective. It, but that's what makes the highlighting this so cool. It's one of those elbow grease jobs that a lot of people wouldn't think about when yeah. they're like, oh, I want to start a side hustle or I want to start a second stream of income. You know, I'm going to Google how to make money online and the cleaning business not what pops up you know and when you no. can generate cash flow like you talk about like it's it's um it's just a different animal man yeah That's and i mean cool. it, it's it's kind of weird it's it literally just been like a form of luck of me falling into it like people definitely discount how much luck is in play in life and a lot of things of business and it definitely has been a lucky road um obviously a lot of hard work but like just getting to the business and growing it um now we're at the point where uh yeah so i guess to piggyback off of that sorry um was i ended up moving back home work visa ended uh so i got kicked out <laughs> i wanted to say yeah, like see ya uh, well, we I, don't I want actually, your money here liam <laughs> I, i'll be honest i love the united states i would live in the united states in a heartbeat but um i went i wish i could contribute to you guys' economy i wish <laughs> um but but they won't let me um you so, are dude you how many students do you have in the u.s yeah i guess we're almost at 80 we're no we're over 80 now but yeah look, um, look at the look at your impact that way that's you know? true that's, that's that's a good perspective <laughs> i didn't think of that um so yeah and anyways move back home and it was one of those things where i just doubled down on the business and uh now we're at the point where i as of last week we have 19 cleaners uh and we do on average anywhere from 45 to 50 gross revenue a month so that's awesome. Um, yeah, it's pretty cool. Um, it, it's it's definitely something where it's taken a while to grind. We have a couple of commercial contracts that help out as well. So we subcontract out to commercial, um, things like that. But it's uh yeah, it, it's taken a while to put in the to put in the implementations and, and the workflows to make it be somewhat automated. It's not hundred percent automated. Um, I hate the people that use the the word passive for anything. This is not a passive business. This is definitely a business that takes nurture time to put towards it and grow it. Um, but you can put workflows in place that allows you to buy your time back. So. Yeah. And, and I'm glad that you brought that up too, because I think one of the biggest misconceptions people have about any entrepreneurial type business is you, there's no such thing as passive. There's always going to be some sort of work somewhere that you have to do. Like, and I, I it's funny because I get people all the time that go, oh, I love your YouTube videos. You know, you show all this automations and things. I was like, yeah, you know how much time that took me to put those things together <laughs> and how much time I spend, you know, optimizing them and tracking them and making sure they're doing what they're supposed to be doing. And, yeah. you know, like it, all that stuff takes time and you have to continue to work on that stuff. And so I'm glad you made, made a point to bring that up that even that, though you're that automating passive, more, that, that passive stuff's really just lifetime value. Yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. It is. Well, and even even people who are, you know, like like what you said, right? You're you built a system that can generate a, a large amount of income. You probably could in some capacity walk away for a while and it would still generate a number a, a good amount of income. But at some point in time, you're gonna have to walk back in and go, okay, I gotta do this, I gotta do that. You know, you're gonna have things to do. And so it's just it's just a good reminder for everybody out there listening that there's no such thing as 
passive income no. these days. And it doesn't matter who you talk to, whether they're real estate investors or they're crypto traders or whatever the thing is, or if you put a whole bunch of money into investment accounts, you're still watching, you're still making changes, you're still doing things in there. It, there, it just doesn't exist. Now there can be semi-passive, but so good, uh, good point on that front. Um, I did have a quick question that came up though, based on you're talking about like the students and things like that. You've got some students that are doing really well. Mm -hmm. So what made you want to shift into teaching other people how to do it versus just scaling it yourself and just, you know, being a one man army? Definitely. That, that's a really good question. And I think, um, I'm a very transparent guy, first off. So I'm going to be very transparent here about a lot of things. It's all um, good. And like I like transparency. Yeah, I actually, I think I go a little bit of against the grain um, comparison to the guru coaching type industry. So it definitely may be a different format of thinking of what Good. people typically say. Um, so ultimately, what I would say, it's based upon uh, leverage vehicles in life. Life, as far as leverage vehicles go, there is ones that help you start to begin with. And there's one, sorry, ones that get you from level zero to one, one to two, two to three, or in so on. talking like means to ends. Means to ends, exactly. So leverage vehicles, based upon my story, the way I've looked at it is cleaning was an amazing beginning. It helped me get to where I am now, where I have some assets under my belt. I have some leverage for capital. I'm able to, it, um, this sounds, I don't want to like, I'm not trying to come off as braggy, but like I have more opportunities coming towards me at which I have enough, I don't have enough time to go towards them at this point. Like there's so, nothing braggy about that, Liam. Like there's a certain amount of like you put enough effort out there and, mm -hmm. and have enough success. The law of attraction really kicks in because people are like, I want to rub elbows with that, that guy. It looks like everything he touches turns to gold. Mm -hmm. And you know, that, that happens all the time in, in the spaces that we talk about and yeah. that Josh and I talk about. And there's nothing braggy about it, you know, because when you have your heart in the right place, you just it's just what what's happening in your life. And yeah, everybody is striving to achieve that, you know, and so people mm -hmm. who hate on that are just jealous. It, that, that's a really good point. And, it, and what I would say, like piggyback on what I was saying was like um, it, cleaning got me from the first level. Now this is something as far as a business wise, because this is a business, right? People like to act like they're just out there virtual signaling to help people, but this is a business, right? I am exchanging knowledge to help you further itself from yourself to get to that first level uh, in return for obviously a monetary value. So um, what I've found is this potentially can help me go towards higher leverage type items, such as like, I like real estate. Um, so this is helping me generate more cash flow to maybe go towards a real estate route down the line in the future. So I'm actively saving capital, things like that. Um, but if the way I word it to people is like, if I can get paid to uh, help people um, and get paid well and get selfish gratitude for helping people, I'm going to keep doing it. So that's another way perspective I look at it in this form, um, as well as if I can help people fast track the four years or three years of wasted time that I went through by all means, hundred percent. Like I'm telling you right now, like the, the stuff I went through, like just junk and wasted time, wasted money. I remember at one point I racked up my credit card for Facebook ads for my business up to almost 10 grand, just Ooh. wasting, just dumb stuff. And like, that's the stuff that I try to help people avoid. Um, so I, that that's my long answer to your question. But um, that's that's sort of where I found myself is like, I'm just looking at forms of leverage and I see this being a lot higher and it'll have a larger ability to scale to then help me reach my higher goals compared to my, my cleaning company would provide me. Um, and that's why I love this business. And like talking to maybe your audience a little bit here is like, um, when people talk a lot about business, I hate this and I hate it on social media all the time is like, once you start a business, it, that that's it. You're locked in for like 10 years. That's, that's what you got to do. It's your forever business. That's it. And I think that is such a dumb, uh, blinder way to look at things because it, it should be based upon opportunity vehicles at where you're at currently. If you're someone that wants to just start a business and you're like, hey, listen, like, for example, there's people in my program, 
that just want to cover their expenses. As people mm-hmm. that are in my program, they just want to uh, go on vacation twice a year with their family, right? They have two kids, husband, wife. They just want to pay for an extra vacation. That's all, right? Mm-hmm. Things like that. Um, you have to sort of understand what your why is and why you're doing something. And then look at the opportunity vehicle that it is and don't feel like you're locked in for many, many years. If you want to start a cleaning company, you want to run it for two years and spits off 4k, 3k of net profit per month for yourself. And it gets you out of a, a, a financial crunch or it puts you in a better situation where you're not hundred percent dependent upon your nine to five. And you're like, well, I don't want to do cleaning forever. I love, I don't know, real estate. Let's maybe start doing real estate. It'll give you leverage to do that. So that's my like main point behind this industry and why I'm helping t- people too, is because I think, I think it just gets a little wishy-washy with how people preach starting businesses online. And I think it's just a little ridiculous. Like you don't need to be locked into something forever, nor does it need to be your nets. It doesn't need to be the next Apple or the next Steve Jobs invention. <laughs> like it just, needs to be something, it just needs to be something that just gives you cash flow a month and, and buys your time back and life back. So. Yeah. Love it. I, I love that answer. I really do. And I think that that, that touches on the next thing that I was going to ask you, but I'll, I'll, I'll segue into that a little bit here. So one of the things that you said that I think is, is really important that a lot of people don't realize that they have to have a mindset shift, right? Is go from just the whole sole purpose of making money to why do you want to make money? You know, it's, it's, what is the what is the underlying cause that's making you reach out in this way? So in your case, you know, building a cleaning business. Why do you want to build a cleaning business? Is it to make money? Okay, why do you want to make money? And there was, um, I forget who I was listening to. It was an older, like one of the older motivational, like entrepreneurial motivational speakers. And they were, they, they basically kept asking this person, so what? And they were just, they'd be like, okay. He's like, so why do you want to build a business? He's like, oh, I want to make money. He's like, so what? Layer deeper. Yeah. And he's like, what do you mean? He's like, so what? So what about it? And he's like, well, I want to be able to pay my bills. So what? And he just went over and over until he got to the bottom where the guy broke down into tears. He's like, I hate seeing my wife work and not being able to spend time with my kids. And I really just, I can't have that anymore. And he goes, that's your reason. Yeah. And it's yeah. like, that's the thing is people don't think about that, that they're, they're thinking surface level and they're not bringing up those feelings. And so like you talk about, nobody thinks about like starting a cleaning business as their next big thing, right? They think about real estate. They think about crypto. They think about investments. Mm-hmm. They think about all this other stuff when really, I mean, why not start a cleaning business? I mean, my son, my son's 13. He's asking like, Hey dad, what if we could like take our lawnmower and go like, mow the neighbor's yards and make some money. I'm like, that's my that moment. like, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I was like, heck yeah. So like, what am I doing now? I'm like, how can I get him the easiest, most effective lawnmower and edger and things to use and just go, here you go, kid. Like just go build your business. And who knows, maybe he likes it. And maybe he turns it into a landscaping business. It's not like we don't have enough of those around the country. <laughs> Dude, I, I had a friend, I, we have a family friend that did that and his business is huge now. Yep. here where i live he's got i can't even tell you how many you know trucks that he has and commercial jobs that he has and he he it started as simply just grass yeah you know cutting grass and it turned into this landscaping business and now he builds patios and he's got like a, a pest control and the, a number of other things man but it's just all because he wanted to to bootstrap you know and push a lawnmower Yep. You know, in, be- in between summers. Yeah. yeah. It, it, it's crazy what some of these, um, well, first off, it, it's nuts how overlooked some of these businesses are. And it, and I like to piggyback off what you said about your why. I think you hit the nail on the head. It, it's very much so. The first question I ask anyone that wants to start a clean business is like, why are you doing this? Like, what, what what's your reason? Like, so I, I, and I, I talk about that a lot. Um, I talk a lot about it in my program, people, um, which is understandable. People get caught up in a lot of um, small details when they're starting a business. And I typically just say to people like, hey, listen, um, I don't want to beat around the bush here. But I have I, what I would say is like, I assume you don't have a passion for cleaning. So maybe let's 
I, I'm sure you joined this program. I'm sure you want to make money. That's what. That's why. So let's focus on the big things, starting the business, getting that first customer and driving some revenue in the front door because that's what you ultimately did this for. That was your why. Um, it wasn't to focus on the small minor details. So, Yeah. And, and that leads into the question that I had was, you know, when people start these cleaning businesses, like how much actual cleaning are they doing versus just outsourcing a lot of that? Because I know, you know, I've obviously done the, my due diligence as a, as a show host and did my research and mm -hmm. looked into kind of how this system works. And I'm assuming when you started, like, obviously your business was based out of your hometown. You were in the U S so you're not like flying to these locations to go <laughs> clean toilets. So like, don't, obviously you don't have to get too far deep into it, but like, yeah. Are these people actually cleaning or are they just being the business? Yeah, really great question. So um, the best way I can explain it is I am a referral agency uh, contracting out other cleaners to complete the services that customers desire um, or request, I guess is a better word. So, for example, a cleaner, a customer calls in, hey, I'm looking for a general clean. Uh, I'm able to contract out cleaners that are already in the industry to then complete the service and the scope of work. Um, and I am basically the middleman connecting the dots on that front. Got it. Um, so that was basically how I was able to do it completely far away. Now there's two ways to go about this in the cleaning industry. One way you can do, you can be super sweaty, meaning you can go out there and do the cleans yourself. I don't know how many people want to do that, but um, my parents did it. It looked, it looked like a lot of hard work. I'll tell you that. It is. Um, but so you can either go that route. You can make some good money. You can be charging like anywhere from 50 to 75 bucks an hour to be cleaning someone's house. So I promise you cleaning someone's house sucks, but you get paid decently to do it. And one's one thing. Um, or you go the route of contractors. So literally, like I just mentioned, hiring out cleaners to go complete services based upon the customer's request. Yeah, um, makes sense. Yeah. And I, I mean, the way I was able to do that far away um, and looking back on it now, even though I was just running it off of maybe a, a notepad and my phone and laptop, um, the systems that were in place were very specific. Like it is very, very detailed and like workflow oriented, like my SOPs and things like that were very nailed down, um, the best to the best of my ability at the current time. So customer would call in and it would, it would be very easy to delegate and send cleaners to go complete the services. But, um, I tried the route with equipment even though you're not supposed to be giving contractors equipment. So do not do this. I was doing it. This is wrong. Um, please don't report me. Um, but I tried that the first like two months, tried to give equipment, didn't work horrible. I was like ordering equipment to the cleaners homes. They were losing it. It was just absolute waste. Um, I tried to, I tried to go the W2 route to hire cleaners, but what ends up happening is margins ends up being cut like crazy. Um, Operating costs go like down the drain and I was remote. So I wasn't in my local city, which makes it even more difficult. Cleaners are, if they're W2, they're expecting vehicles, they're expecting equipment, they're expecting um, everything, literally everything. Um, so that wasn't going to work. So this was the route I intended to, I ended up going to, um, which ended up working out quite well. And anyway, I've just stuck with it since then, but it, it was not my first intention. It took me a lot of trial and error to figure it out until I got to this point. Awesome. I like how in the program, Liam, that you, you talk about taking an old school industry and putting modern a modern yeah. twist. Not really a twist. It's just putting modern solutions to that old school industry to create efficiencies. And yep. so, mm -hmm. and that's, uh, to me, that's as simple as it is. It's you're taking the sweaty start, this, this sweaty startup job, putting technology and automation into it with your workflows, Right. And then, yeah. and then with, with, you know, a, a modern business set up with your 1099s and then the, it's not that complicated. It really isn't. You just got to do the work. hundred percent. And so I, I hate to take away from the old school industries because I think they're amazing at a couple things. One thing is customer service. I think the local business owner that goes around and shakes everyone's mm -hmm. hand, shakes everyone's hand. He knows everyone at the local YMCA like that. That's great. That's amazing. Um, he's able to build amazing customer service. Uh, he or she's able to build amazing um, lifetime value and retention of the customers. Yep. 
But I don't that this isn't taken away from that. I don't like at all. Like if you know, a lot of the people that are your contractors, they're also small business owners, you know. And, exactly. And, yeah. and so you're just a tool in their business operation, you know. And then you're just working together, and that's all business ever is, anyway, right? Like, uh, yeah. I mean, I mean, it, it realistically, like people always ask me, well, why are you needed? If you have contractors, why don't the contractors just go to directly to the customer? Because you're solving. Well, the... <laughs> Never mind. Well, you, you explain. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, yeah. Well, the main thing is like, is because it's pain points, right? You're solving an issue. The cleaners' pain points are they can't run a business themselves. I don't know if anyone that's listening has ever hired a cleaner themselves, but most likely they're scheduling off a of text or they're scheduling yeah. off of email, phone numbers. It just gets annoying as a customer's point of view. You're able to step in as a business owner, a good operator, leverage tech, provide assistance to the cleaner, and then take a good percentage of cut profit for yourself and as well as the cleaner gets paid as well. Good. Like, honestly, like, I'm not trying to, like, pump my own tires, but I'm actually quite proud of I had a cleaner make $1,500 in one week. And, like, that's crazy. The, all cleaners that are W-2s across the industry get paid minimum wage. And I had a cleaner that walked away in one week net. 1500 bucks. So like these cleaners are incentivized to work with you because you handle so many things, you manage so many things and you're, you're just a good operator and they get paid better to do it, uh, to help you clean and be reliable. So. I do, I do got a, a just quick side note. Uh, you know, we talked before we started the show of like building relationships with our show. Right. And you're talking about that with your cleaners, you know, building relationships. And so, uh, I love it when one of our past guests calls Kyle out for his messy room <laughs> and straight up is like, like, is this an intervention? <laughs> this is simply a beanbag gamer chair sitting on a bed. Yeah. So and it's, it's, it's not that hilarious. messy, Steve. It, it just, it just goes to show that like, I love the people that we get on the show and, and you're mm -hmm. no, you're no, uh, you know, no different. Right. Like Liam is like, I love this because, you're talking the real truth. And, you know, one of the things that Hang on, I this love is about actually my guests, green screen. I mean, there you go. That's a green screen. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, like it's, you're talking about this and you, you talk about people that are like, Oh, you know, why don't they just go do it themselves? And I, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind is you uneducated swine. Like you don't understand how this works. And it's because these people, they don't, right? They, the people that are making those comments, they just don't understand what you're doing for these people, what you're doing for these cleaners. And, mm -hmm. you know, one of the first jobs I ever had coming out of college was, or no, sorry, it wasn't even coming. It was in college was I worked for a cleaning company called Service Master. And they're a very well-known, oh. yeah, very well-known company. And uh, they, they have places all over. And what mm -hmm. was interesting is I remember getting paid just, I mean, total shit wages mm -hmm. and it was going around and we did commercials. So it was a lot easier than dealing with residential where you're dealing with people's homes and their furniture and whatever. But the difference was I would like, I knew how much they made because they were a family friend. They, they service master does franchising. So they had their own franchise locally here in North Dakota and, it was just like, I, I was thinking about this going, man, this dude is making bank off of us. Mm -hmm. We're going out doing all this work and this guy is making tons of money off of us. How in the world is, is this even fair? And you look at just the corporate world in general, and that's just the structure. So you think about it, people go, well, why don't these guys go get their clients themselves? Because they have to do all of that work and it's not cost effective. 100%. For them to do, or, all of or they're not willing to take the risk, or they're not willing to take the risk. Exactly. Yeah. If there's risk or reward that's involved that a lot of people don't like to think about. Right. Well, so, and, and when you're when you're communicating with someone directly, you are putting yourself in the crosshairs and saying, "Okay, you know, I'm going to come clean your place and whatever." And then when something goes wrong, you get the call and you have to kind of like, "Okay, well, sorry, I didn't." You know, I don't think I did that, but okay, thanks. You know, something breaks or whatever. Mm -hmm. Well, now if the contractor breaks something. Or God forbid somebody call, steals something. Or somebody yeah. steals something, you get the call and you go, hey, I'm totally sorry about that. And now you can just choose to not work with that contractor again. It, it, exactly. Exactly. It, and it, I, it's a win-win. 100%. And funny enough, actually, to what Kyle said about stealing. 
I've actually, funny enough, I've had more issues with customers uh, to my cleaners than I've had with my cleaners to my customers. Really? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I've got Like stealing head. cleaning stuff? Like customers disrespect. Just being oh, so sure. disrespectful. Like, uh, and, and what I'll say is like, um, I'm not here to like um, virtue signal at all or anything like that. I, I just, well, what I'll say when it Liar, comes to- you're from Canada. That's what you do. <laughs> <laughs> he's he's not Kidding. saying in U.S. speak, but in real. <laughs> <laughs> but, but what I'll say is like, I, I've cleaned a house before. I've cleaned a move in, move out, clean at a home. And I'm not even joking. It is like, it, it's torture. It, like, it, it, it is so bad. And I really sympathize because I've been there and I've done that. And I've gone to a house I've had to clean before. Um, It's so hard where it's like, no wonder these cleaners just want to like clock in. They want to go clean the house and go home and just relax. They don't want to have to get with the phone calls. They don't want to have to manage the calendars. Like I wouldn't want to either. I've cleaned for eight hours a day before. It's hard work. It's nuts. Like it's really, really difficult. Um, And, Unfortunately, a lot of people out there, they don't leave their house very clean. So it, 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 can, it can get to be a pretty big mess. So it's just something to note. It, it's def, there's, a, there's, a, there's a cog uh, in everywhere for someone out there uh, in, yeah. in the business mix, for sure. So. So, so Josh and I took a course from Russell Brunson a while back. Cool. Yeah. And one of the, one of the, the key points that, that he highlights is the who, not the how. And so a lot of people are like, oh, you you know, you run the, your own business. You should know how to do this and that and the other. And, you know, some people are jacks of all trades, but other people just want to focus on their 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 top skill set. Right. And mm-hmm. double down on that. And then other people that are good at that other thing can do that, you know, yep. and it's just matching matching top skill sets. Yep. So. No, 100%. Yeah, that's, and that's one of the reasons. Oh, sorry. I was just going to say that from what Kyle said, that's one of the reasons why you do what you do, right? Is because you are good at the the whole business side of things where a lot of these contractors aren't. A lot of these guys are blue collar workers or people, yeah. right? They're not all guys, but these people are blue collar workers and they, they don't, a lot of them probably don't either know how to run a business or don't care to run a business. And yeah. I know you mentioned that early on. And I think that that point needs to be driven home is that, there's a lot of opportunity in the world for people that just don't want to do the thing. They just don't. And so we can be the people that do the thing and say, here, I'm going to do this thing for you. So you can focus on what you're good at. And they're more than happy to pay a premium for that. Oh, hundred percent. I mean, customers too, looking at their perspective, like if working directly with a cleaner, it's so much of a pain. They rather pay additional costs just to have a communication with someone that is um, an effective communicator and someone that simply just answers their messages and like just schedules correctly, things like that. If you can do that, people are willing to pay a very high premium. Um, people, I think, underestimate the cost of convenience. Convenience is, runs this world. Literally, DoorDash, Uber Eats. Uh, I don't know. There's so many things out there. Um things on the cell, on your cell phone, all that type of stuff. It, you can charge a significant amount if you can provide convenience to someone's life. And that's all cleaning does. And that's why I would say like the lifetime value of these customers to throw some numbers out there is anywhere from net income of $4,200 to $5,000 of one individual customer. That's the entire lifetime value. So if you think about it, if you can land a customer for customer acquisition cost of like, I don't know, I'm just throwing, these are random numbers. Not, not that first one. That was actually accurate data, but this one's going to be a random number. But th- 32 bucks for a customer acquisition, um, depending upon your ads, you're literally landing a $5,000 potential contract with that person. Yeah, that's killer ROI. That's it, it, Lily, you're getting up into like software levels. Like it, yeah. it, so put a, put a dollar in, get, you know, 32 times out. 64 times out, 100 times out. Seriously, that's printing money. And I'm not I'm not recommending this strategy, but there's an amazing 30-day credit card strategy where you have no interest on the credit card. You can push forward ads. You can go out there, drive some customer acquisition for 30 bucks a customer. Like I said, that was an estimated number. And then you have a little, you can land a customer that has a lifetime value of five grand. And then you simply pay off the credit card 
And then it's like, oh my God, I literally have a $5,000 customer and I paid 30 bucks for it with not even my own money. I use someone else's money to do that. So there's so many different strategies. Fancy. Pardon me? So now you're getting fancy. <laughs> now I'm getting, now I'm diving in the weeds a little too much, but yeah. <laughs> it's all good. So, so what's hey, the... Talk, talk, Talk about your the community though that, that you've built within yeah. uh, with within the the course, and you have one outside of the course too in the other in the other Discord that you. That you yeah, have. yeah. So um, right now I uh, I do a lot of things, I guess. Um, <laughs> I have a accelerator program which is cleaning from zero. So um, that's the mentorship coaching. Uh, basically, what it is, we help people uh, if they say they come in, they approach. Uh, me and my team, they'll basically say they're looking for more cash flow in their life. They're looking for help to grow a cleaning business. Um, they can join a community. They can join um, the program. It will help them scale to a six-figure business in one year. So it literally has like video content. We do office hours, round tables. Uh, there's tons of self accelerator content in there, all types of stuff. So that's the one thing. Um, I paid last month. I'm getting ready to start. I'm doing this. I'll report back. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, so yeah, so I have that going, uh, which is awesome. We have right now just over 80 people, which is super cool. Uh, we just crossed that milestone. So that's awesome. We've had people land 300 unit apartment buildings within their first month contracts. We've had people, uh, someone, I just joined a office hours last week and they told me, I didn't even know this. Like, I, um, I didn't check on their accountability sheet. Uh, for a little bit. And they said they did 6.5K revenue within the first month of launch. Crazy. Um, I had someone else, they landed, I think it was um, two or three different commercial contracts off of that for short-term rentals, which is pretty cool. So they're doing that. That's someone else that's over in Florida. So there's a lot of a lot of some cool, awesome stuff go happening uh, in it. Um, so I have that going on. And then I also have a, it's called Young Bootstrappers. It's a free community. So if anyone wants to join, feel free to join. It's on Discord. Um, you also can, it's a link in my bio. You can find it on Twitter too, on my, through my we'll, link. Tree. We'll put all the links in, in, the, in the description. Awesome. The I love it. So yeah, feel free to join that. It's free. We have just over 2,000 people in there. Um, to be very transparent, uh, myself, I'm not too active in there. I jump in every once in a while to, to inform people on some stuff, maybe upcoming things. You're a little busy on the other one. Yeah, I'm a little busy on the other one. So um, this one's just sort of a back end stuff. And uh, yeah, there's so many people in there. Like we have like uh, small business, real estate. Um, we have residential cleaning, commercial cleaning, um, everything, digital marketing, all types of stuff is in there. So um, definitely join that and start chatting with people. So, yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. So that was, so you had cleaning from zero and then young bootstrappers, right? Yep. Cleaning from zero and young bootstrappers. But my main focus right now is cleaning from zero because I want to make sure everyone's successful in that. Um, and I want to make sure everyone gets up there to hit that six figure business mark for yeah. sure. So. And and one other point that I think that we should make before we get into uh, a little more of a, of a shameless plug for your course here is so. Yeah. I don't think people realize, I mean, I mean, you look like a young guy on the, on the video and, you know, Kyle and I are in our thirties, but you're not even 30 yet. No, 26, 26 years old. Yeah. And so I want, I want people to hear this, right? 26 years old and built a multiple six figure, I think even seven figure now cleaning business where you're yeah. literally outsourcing all of your cleaning. Like I, I, how does, how does that feel to know that you've outpaced like 90% of everybody else that are in your age range. Yeah, it's, it's interesting. Um, I'm very grateful, of course. Uh, I'm grateful as far as like being able to give in the opportunity as far as just through my parents. Like, like I said, it's, it's insane how much luck comes to part in, in business and life. Like my parents had a cleaning company. I don't know how they came up with that idea. Like, I think my mom's friend or something said like, she had a friend that was like, did it? I don't know. Like, <laughs> it's just weird how things happen in life. Um, but I, I'm very, very grateful. And it, it is kind of like a weird thing to think about. I'm by no means like a millionaire. I'm not someone that's like super, super financial free, like, or like, I don't know, I can retire tomorrow type of thing. <laughs> I have a long way to go. Yeah, you're 26. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I have a long way to go. Not that um, there's any number on it. But you got, yeah. you're just, 
building these businesses, you know, and yeah. they're cash flow producing and you keep, I love the mindset that you build one asset to invest in another asset to build mm -hmm. that asset to invest again. And then you can turn around and have it for your lifestyle, but you're continuing to pump cash flow, you know, in this circle. And now you go from one cash flowing asset to four or five, six, and you're, and you look at it and you're like, now I have six cash flowing assets. And then you can turn around and look at yourself being in the seven figure net profit range, you know, and then moving to eight figures, you know, 100%. over time, it just takes those systems to with the system and time because time's on your side yeah. and that, and it compounds, everybody knows the power of compounding and there okay. you go. Yeah. Like it's, yeah, yeah. It's, 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 it's just compounded effort day after day uh, is, is the biggest thing, especially with business. Like it's such a roller coaster. Some days, some days absolutely are going to suck in business. Some days are going to be absolutely like the peak. Amazing. Like it's just a rush of dopamine. Um, but it, just compounded effort. Um, it's this, the one thing I love about this business. I'll stop ranting. Sorry, but the, oh, the one thing right. I love about this business is like it's not rocket science. Like what, what everything that I've done, that I promise you, it is not rocket science. There's a right playbook to do it to save yourself a lot of time and money. But it's by no means anything that's extraordinarily difficult or anything that's like hard to pick up. Anyone can do it. You can take it as far as you want. You can really have it as a small cash flow machine in the back of your life if you want, or you can have this million dollar company if you want. Whatever you want to pursue, you have the ability to do that with this. So great segue into, so tell us about your course. Number one, how can people get to your course and learn about it? And then tell us you know, kind of what it does for people. Yeah, of course. So uh, if the best place to find me is on Twitter always. Uh, I'm very active on Twitter. So if you just search up at Liam Kircher, uh, literally just first name, last name. I don't know how I got that handle. I got really lucky. <laughs> um, but yeah, just search me up at Liam Kircher. Um, if you go to my link tree and then you click the top, it's literally just like scheduled phone call. You can schedule a phone call with me and my team. We'll sit down with you. Uh, literally, it'll be like we talked about a little bit earlier in this call. What's your why? Why do you want to do this? Um, we vet people pretty hard. We want to make sure people that want to join, they're serious about it. Uh, it's something they want to have a long-term commitment with this. It's a one-year program. So it is a longer haul type thing. The reason we made it one year is because I really want to press behind. This is by no means a get rich quick. This is not like you see those guru ads, like drop shipping, make a hundred K in one month. This is starting a house cleaning business and it's going to take some time to compound. And that's why we make sure like people are in it for the long haul. And we, we do those calls. So go to my link. Tree. Derek's pretty awesome too, man. Who Derek is awesome. Out. Yeah. Follow Derek. Derek's uh, our, our, my sales director. He's amazing. Nice. Uh, he'll, he'll answer any of your questions. Um, yeah, we have so, a decent so, real quick, you said you had a pretty strict vetting process. So, I mean, Kyle must have just like squeaked by then, right? <laughs> <laughs> Kyle is perfect. Kyle is perfect for it. <laughs> um, it, it's most said all the things. <laughs> <laughs> well, he knew what to say, right? You know, <laughs> it's mostly research. time dedication is what it is. Yeah. If you're able to put towards this a minimum of 10 to 15 hours per week towards this, you should you should be able to grow a successful business. Yeah. Um, if you follow the playbook, all those types of things are, are the main thing. So as long as you meet that and, and you're willing to try, then I don't see any room for failure, to be very honest. Um, but it's a one-year program. We have a Discord community where everyone can chat. We have about just over 80 people in there. there people are constantly talking. My Discord. There's tons of value in that. Just the oh. people chatting back and forth. There was some. There's people talking about uh, the de like the definition of wh why cleaners should be bonded versus not. Yeah, not, I, I and, like, like, it was yeah. <laughs> it was an in depth conversation. And the guy had like a really great answer. If some of the cleaners aren't bonded, he's like, it really doesn't matter because bonding's for like construction, yeah. you know, so, construction contracts, and we're not contracting with anybody. Yeah, it, it, I, I learned that too. That was interesting. Um, but yeah. there, there's some good conversations in there. We got people sharing their wins, their learnings, their losses too, if they have any. Um, we also do office hours. So twice a week, I jump on like a Zoom call. It's not mandatory. If you want to jump on, you can jump on. Literally, if you just want to talk and say hi, you can do that too, um, or ask me any questions. And then we also um, do accountability. So literally, the I strive, I don't I don't strive to be like over your shoulder every day asking questions of what you're doing. 
but I strive to at least try to help you build external habits to then so you can translate those out of the program um, or sorry, earn internal habits so you can take those out of the program and help you scale the business even bigger compared to what you would in the program itself. Um, but yeah, th that's, that's literally everything it. And there's a bunch of video content, of course, that literally walks you through step-by-step -step of everything you need to do from the ground up. LLC, insurance, employment lawyer, all that type of stuff. I, I walk all through that in video content too. That's website. Awesome. Yep. Ads. Website, website, ads, marketing. Interview uh, questions. Yep. yep. I give interview scripts. Um, I give job description script. It's literally like, I promise you, it, it's a play by play of literally step by step from ground up. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. And I, I think there's a lot of value behind that where, you know, like you talked about before, you went through all the hard stuff already. So mm -hmm. why should, why should other people have to go through the hard stuff if you already did, you know, and that's, and that's something that I think a lot of these, and, and I'm, I've gone, I've grown into kind of what you talked about earlier of, and I, I think Kyle is starting to see that. And Kyle and I have talked about this every now and then is like moving away from the whole coaching guru thing and going more into the, just helping people for the sake of helping people. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I, I believe it was Zig Ziglar that said, if you help enough people get what they want, you'll eventually get what you want, you know? And it's the thing is, is that what you're doing is you said, Hey, look, I've, I've perfected this model or at least made it successful. Why don't I put this out there and help other people do the same thing? And then not only are you getting validation that what you did works and mm -hmm. it can work for other people, but now you get all these other people that are going to have that same mentality of they're going to set up to get leverage, right? They're going to set up to help other people. They're going to set up to create multiple streams of income They're And, and for whatever their why is, most of these people are going to piggyback off of what you did and you're setting the example for all these people. And, and plus I'm sure not every single person coming into your course is in their twenties. You probably got people of all ranges in there. Yeah. So what's great about that is I can only imagine the person in their forties or fifties going, well, heck if Liam can do it in his twenties, I can do this in my forties or fifties and still live a, an awesome second half of my life. So 100%. it's cool that you're doing that. And I think that that gets missed a lot because we're so overshadowed these days with all these get rich quick and, and make money online gurus. And it's hard to shine through the weeds, but I'll tell you what, I did one search on your name and <laughs> I couldn't name? believe the amount of attention that just your name came up with. And I was like, this dude is everywhere. Like, how have I not seen this? And it's because the overshadowing, right? Mm -hmm. People aren't seeing a lot of this stuff. And so that's part of the reason why I'm glad that we were able to have you on because people need to know that this exists. People need to know that there's a, there's an opportunity out there that doesn't have to be spending $5,000 on just purely an informational blueprint on what it means to be an affiliate marketer. Like that stuff <laughs> doesn't need to be out there anymore. We need to actually have real training, real courses, real businesses that are being built. And so I'm thankful that you can be here to, you know, at least talk about your story and, and what it, what you went through and why you do what you do and how people can get started. Because I think, I think this is very, very helpful and, and it's definitely in the right direction. No, I, I really appreciate that. And yeah, like it, it's a, uh, it's definitely something I'm passionate around as far as like um, it, there's no better feeling than getting a message. And I got this message the other day that someone was able to quit their nine to five job because they started a cleaning business and they're doing on average 5k per month. That's like, that's so cool to see. So um, it, it's, uh, it's definitely been a little bit of selfish gratitude in doing this. And it's, it's pretty awesome to see a lot of people succeed. And um, you should be proud of that, man. It's making, yeah. you know, quite the mark on the world. It, it is kind of cool. It is, I, uh, yeah, no, it, um, it definitely is something where I, I am quite proud of it. It's, uh, to see other people succeed is pretty awesome. My mom always yeah. said, like, my mom's like, you gotta be a teacher. You gotta be a teacher. I, For sure. I never want to be a teacher. I'll tell you that. But I do enjoy helping people and not teaching necessarily, but at least giving the toolkit and making sure and making sure they don't hit any roadblocks. So. Well, there, there you go, Kyle, is when you make your first win, 
is you send him a ruler, a pencil, and an apple and say, for thanks sure. for being the best teacher ever. <laughs> yeah, because the definition he just gave out is being a teacher. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I'm not a teacher. I, I, that's the thing too. I, I don't like calling people uh, students. I always say members because I'm like, students are so cringy. I don't know why. <laughs> yeah. And I, I've used it a couple of times with, with my members and my group too. And I'm like, oh, you know, when I talk to my students and I had one person go, are you teaching a master class or something like that? And I was like, well, I could, but no. And they're like, well, then why do you call them students? I was like, you know, I never thought about that. But now that you mentioned it, it's like, Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a my teammate. teammates. My teammates. teammates. That's good. That's good. Teammates is good. Um, the other the other thing that I've seen is, uh, oh, well, the someone. Oh, now I'm having a brain fart. See, it happens. It happens. But it, it it was it was there and then it was gone. <laughs> <laughs> so, I gotcha. Um, anyway, well, but, yeah. Liam, man, this has been great. This has been amazing. I'm so thankful you were here with us and being able to be online with us. Uh, Kyle, what do you got for final thoughts for Liam? I'm just really, really glad that uh, you were able to come on and we were able to kind of mm -hmm. showcase what you're doing. You know, a lot of people, again, that are looking for, you know, another way to build revenue or income streams for themselves or their families are you know they'll google how to make money online right and it's there's a lot of great stuff on there but there's a lot of fluff on there and there's a lot of uh traps that are on there and people skimp over opportunities like this and the barrier to entry here is small right okay. it's super small it literally is a little elbow grease like quite literally mm -hmm. to to start this deal with little risk you know you you, you don't you don't fork out you know, tens of thousands of dollars to start yeah. this. You need, you know, if you have a little bit of a little bit of marketing skill and mm -hmm. can run some ads and can answer, you know, some questions with your cell phone, you can do this, you know, and it's um, I really I really am happy that we're able to showcase a business like this on top of some of the many other businesses that business styles that we've showcased and successful entrepreneurs because there's not one way to do it. No, no. no. Uh, the one last final thought I'll say is like, can you answer a phone? Can you use a schedule? Um, then you should be able to start a cleaning business. That's really all you need. So that's awesome. Well, again, thank you so much. I appreciate it. And from both of us at those two dads here, we hope that we can have you on again in the future and be able to, do like an update. You know, we, we've been talking about that and we're kind of starting around the corner where we're going to start going back to some of uh, some of our past guests and get some updates. And so I'd love to be able to bring you back on down the road, whether it's, you know, a year or two or whatever it is, and just see where things are at that point. You know, I'd love to see how things have grown and, and how you've grown and, and how it's been able to, what you've moved into with the leverage that you've used and you've gained. And so it's, it's been a pleasure and uh, we'll uh, catch you around. Awesome, guys. Thanks for having me. Have a good night. Until next time, guys.